In case you haven't heard the good news, the Digital Monster X, which first released in Japan in 2019, will be releasing in English this summer. We first heard about this back when a few Asian retailers listed them for sale in August of 2020, and last month at the DigiNavi, we received a official word that, yes, these are in fact coming, they are releasing outside of Japan in English, and just this past Friday, we saw them get listed for sale on Amazon US. They're being listed as the same price as the Digital Monster version 20th, and there are two colors currently up there. We have the version white and blue and the version green and blue, uh, both of which should be following the original version white of the Digital Monster X version 1. So it's very exciting to see that happening because for the longest time, if you were a fan of Digimon V-Pets, but you didn't want to go through the hassle of working with importers or spending a lot of money on shipping, then you would probably be stuck with the Digital Monster version 20th. And it's a fine device, but there are other devices. And I would definitely say that the Digital Monster X is in fact a better device than the Digital Monster version 20th. And I'll go through all the differences in this video and explain why. But the great thing about all this is that you'll just be able to pick one up the same way you could pick up a Digital Monster version 20th. You throw $20 in Amazon and a Digimon pops out. It's very exciting and I'm sure we'll be seeing it pop up in other areas in the near future as well. We know at least that Malaysia, Indonesia, and Taiwan should all be getting it. I don't know about other territories for sure, um, but we did see um, Australia and Canada, for example, get the Digital Monster version 20th at various retailers. And in the US, it'll probably be not only on Amazon. Hi, Betamon, how are you doing? We'll get to you in just a second, buddy, hold on. Um, you probably saw it pop up in GameStop, Target, and other areas, so it may be coming to those retailers as well. And the version black and red should be popping up on Amazon in the near future as well. I don't know when, um, but considering the other two are on there, we should see that one soon. Uh, there's also going to be a fourth color, and based on the original information we got all the way back in August, that fourth color is probably going to be purple and red. Um, it may also be green and red, was what another source I had back then told me, but I'm not super certain on that. So. What I'm going with purple and red is more likely, or it could be something completely different and they may have changed things since then even. So hard to say, but either way, look out for those um, on Amazon here in the new future or wherever you want to get it from, wherever it may come up at. So great, important thing to know though is why would you want a Digital Monster X? Why would uh, you want it if you already have a Digital Monster version 20th? Because is this, are they similar? And the answer to that question is no, they're very, very different pets. Now, a lot of the core mechanics are the same, but the way that you're raising your Digimon is very different uh, between the two devices. So it's a very different experience from one to the other, and I absolutely recommend getting one, and I want to make sure that you know, because again, some of you are enthusiasts like me, who go out and import a whole bunch of Japanese pets and try out everything that you can, and you already know about this, but I know that there's a much larger majority of you out there that just get what you're able to get, and that include the Digital Monster version 20th is all that a lot of people can but get, because that's the only one that's available in your region, and I totally get that. I get not wanting to mess with importers, so this is going to be great. You're going to be able to pick this up, you're going to be able to have a brand new V-Pet. You just probably got to know a little bit more about it before you are, are ready to dive in. So I'm going to go through all these differences, let you know exactly what to expect. And the first big thing to expect is the, well, let's talk about the ex body first, I guess. So here we have, you may recognize this little guy, he looks like Agumon, right? And it is an Agumon, but it is not Agumon itself. This is Agumon X, and he's got a little piece of poop right there. You may notice it looks a little bit different from the original Agumon sprite, or even the Pendulum Agumon sprite, and that is because Digimon change their designs a little bit when they undergo what's called X evolution. And to give you a very brief, brief rundown on that, they're basically the god of Digimon. Yggdrasil was like, I'm running out of hard drive space, guys. I gotta delete you all. And he deleted 99% of Digimon using the X program. But the thing is, is that that remaining 1% was able to survive because because they developed the X antibody, hence making them X Digimon like Agumon X here. There's also some natural carriers, most famous of which would probably be Dorumon and his evolutions, and those are the types of Digimon that populate this device. You may notice in the background there, if you can see it, uh, that this is the same background as the uh, Digimon Pendulum Nature Spirits, the original 1.0, and the reason it's the same background is because this is the old Digimon world, uh, uh, old, uh, there we go, you can see even better now. This is the old digital world, and it's kind of undergone a lot of ruination since then, so it's all gross. The trees have been stripped of their branches, the lakes dried up, etc. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool touch to make the background look like that on these devices. So anyway, that's the background on X. If you want to know more about that, I do have a whole video on the Digimon Pendulum X, uh, so go check that out. I've got a link to it up in the corner right now. 
click on that if you want to learn more about the Digimon Pendulum X. And this device makes a lot of callbacks to the Digimon Pendulum X. It's kind of a spiritual successor. It's definitely a sequel to the Digital Monster version 20th as well, but it's like, it's a sequel to both basically. It's like, what if you took the Digital Monster version 20th and you took the Digimon Pendulum X, slammed them together, you'd get something like this. So there's a lot of things to go over in it and we're gonna, I'm gonna try my best to put this in an order that makes sense because I'm gonna be having to pop, hop around a little bit on this. But one of the first things you should know is that there's something called the XAI. This is gonna be one of the first things that you see when you turn on the device. It stands for X Antibody Indicator and we refer to it as Zai for short, which is a little pun because Sai is Japanese for dice or die. Well, I don't know if it's plural or not. That's not really a thing in Japanese, is it? Either way, not important right now. So the Zai, and we can see it right here, it's represented as a six-sided die, although there are actually seven sides on this one because you can roll one through seven. Right now, I have two little dots, meaning I have rolled a two on my daily Zai roll. So what does that mean exactly? Well, your daily Zai roll determines what kind of random encounters you will get for the day. And that's right, your Digimon will just randomly have something happen. It'll start doing a slow beep when that occurs. You pick it up, you hit the confirm button, and one of a few different things can happen. You may receive just a present, um, which is one of various items. You may receive a battle from a strong Digimon. For example, on these devices, Damemon will pop up. He's a very strong adult level Digimon, and he will challenge you. If you beat him, you get a thousand experience points. More on experience points later. And if you uh, are super unlucky, you may encounter a Numemon, which just pops up, poops on your screen, and then leaves. <laughs> it's, this device has all sorts of fun things that can happen like that. So uh, there's also a very special random encounter, which is a very strong ultimate level, super ultimate level Digimon that'll come in and challenge you um, if you've rolled a very high number for your Zai for the day. And if you're able to beat it, you'll be able to unlock it as an evolution for later on. And more, we'll go over more on unlocking evolutions here in a bit. So you'll notice though that I was able to see the Zai by clicking the C button. And when you click the C button, you'll actually be able to go through a few key stats just to look at. So you'll be able to see your hunger, your strength, your effort, and your level and experience all just by hitting the C button. You don't necessarily have to go into the menu to do that, but you still can. Um, other thing I want to show you real quick is that if we hit the B button right here, brings up the time, right? You'll notice there's no AM or PM. Uh, if we go to this guy right here, you know, we have the AM right there, and there's nothing we can do about that, which I don't like. I don't like 12 hour time. I prefer 24 hour time. Um, so for me, I like to leave it on 12 hour, and at 11.48, you know, you don't really notice a difference because that's the same for everybody. But if I hit this little button right up here, you'll see it has an AM. So I just switched it to 12 hour time. And now it's back to 24 hour time. So once this gets to three in the afternoon, it'll show on here as 1500. So that's a touch that I really like. They introduced that in the original Digimon Pendulum as the ability to switch between different times. And it's stuck mostly on Digimon uh, devices, but yeah, either way, so you'll be able to do that. So whatever time you prefer, I know most Americans probably prefer 12 hour time, but I will always advocate the greatness of 24 hour over 12 hour time. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's the clock for you. Otherwise the clock is still a clock. Um, let's look at the stats. Huh? So we have Agumon X right there, and that little name that was scrolling by should be listed in English. He's one year old, he weighs 13 gigabytes, and you'll notice that he has half a heart um, of hunger right now. So one, one and a half hearts of hunger. And you also notice there's not hearts going all the way across. So for comparison here, and we'll zoom out a little bit here so I can look at both of them at once. So you'll see, okay, so Betamon has four hearts going across, but none of them are half filled, and none of them will ever be half filled, while Agumon has one and a half hearts. And the reason for that is, first of all, Agumon does not have hearts going all the way across because he's a child level. Every two stages, you get another heart. So for babies and the child stage, they only have two hearts, adults and perfects have three, and ultimates and super ultimates both have a full four hearts. And all the way along, they can be filled up in half intervals. So if a um, child is 100% hungry, then you'll feed it four times. And it won't take more than four. You can't overfeed on these devices. And if an adult is all the way hungry, it'll take eight pieces of meat before it will be satiated. So that is how the hearts work. It's a little bit different, but easy to get the hang of, and you'll get used to that real fast. Um, then we have over here the effort meter, right? You should remember this from the Digital Monster version 20 that had the effort meter too. However, you'll notice in the evolution guide that I always listed it as training, not effort. I said you'll need to get like five to 12 trainings for whatever it is, I don't know it off the top of my head, uh, for certain Digimon. Whereas he, on the Digital Monster X chart, I list it just as effort. And that's because effort is now directly correlated to evolution. Before it was the number of trainings, 
um, but it didn't always match up with effort. For example, the minimum requirement was five a lot of the time, and there's no indicator for five on the effort. It's, it goes from four to eight, just like that. But now it's that if you need, if um, a Digimon needs eight training, you know, it'll have two effort hearts on the guide, and that'll always be correct. If, as long as you have the right number of effort hearts, you'll get that evolution. Um, then they're continuing on in the stats. There we go. We get to see the actual attribute of the Digimon this time. Now, the Digital Monster version 20 had attributes. For example, Betamon, what are you? You data or virus? I think you're a virus. Pretty sure Betamon's virus. Um, but it doesn't list that anywhere on the device. Whereas Agumon, we can see right up there at the top, he's a vaccine. Easy to see. We also see its evolutionary stage, which is a three. The virtual pets don't really actually use names like perfect, ultimate, mega, super duper strong man they don't use those names on the device themselves so you, the virtual pets usually go by just roman numerals so this is a stage three which is a child level digimon in J japanese or in the um most of the dubbed versions it is a rookie so it lists it just as a number right here which i, I kind of like that actually I might make my whole website like that one day but probably not because that'll just confuse everybody um then we have the level and experience. So Digimon can actually level up here, and you'll see I have a little star right there. That star means the Agumon's currently at the max level. For a child Digimon, they can only go up to level four, but at the higher stages, so ultimate and super ultimate, they can go up to level 10. Every time you evolve, that level will reset. And how do you increase level? Well, that's part of quest mode. So every time you go into a battle in quest mode, you'll be able to fight various Digimon and they give you various amounts of experience. And that experience actually um, is determined by this right here. So we see the Zai again. You remember him? Well, he's back. There's a quest mode Zai, and every day that will reroll as well. So if you roll a one through a three on the quest mode Zai for the day, then your Digimon will get, have tougher battles to fight, but those tougher battles will give it more experience. If you roll four to six, it will have easier battles, but will get less experience. And if you roll a mighty seven, then you'll have easier battles and you'll have more experience. So the uh, best of both worlds right there. So as you fight, you gain experience, and as you gain experience, you level up. Every time you level up, you get a certain buff. You'll either get more power, attack, or HP. And important to note, power is the likelihood in which your shots will connect. Um, attack, uh, attack or AP is the amount of damage they do. All Digimon do the same amount of damage out of the box, um, including so a, a Tokemon, a Stage 2 Digimon, will deal as much damage as Omegamon, basically. Um, but as they level up, they get additional buffs to that, so they'll do more damage based on how much um, how much experience level they have. And the last thing is the HP. Digimon of the same stage all have the same HP, so all child levels start with 10 HP, and as you level up, that will increase to a maximum of 30 HP for a level 10 super ultimate. So leveling up super important, must do it for uh, battling. It's also important for evolutions, because unlike uh, the previous devices before this, um, evolution isn't based on winning percentage, and it's not based on the number of battles you do after you reach adult. Once you reach adult, it's based on how much um, experience level you have. So certain evolutions are going to happen if you are a, let's say, level 6 adult, but you might get a different evolution if you're only a level 1 adult. So that's very important to keep track of. Um, again, that's all. that all information is on the guide, so if you want to know what evolution you'll get based on what level you are, you can check there. And another thing about the evolutions is that you actually unlock them in quest mode too. So let's go back to quest mode here. So you'll see that I'm at Area 9 right now, right? And I'm at Area 9 for a very specific reason, because in Area 8 over here, I unlocked something when I beat it. You'll see the boss of Area 8 is Tyrannomon X, and by defeating Tyrannomon X on this black version device, I was able to actually unlock him as an evolutionary choice. So if I go down to my library down here, I can see, okay, oh, there's a Putimon, there's Tokemon X, there's a Mystery. So if this one was actually locked by default, um, there's Agumon in there. We can see I have slot 5 unlocked, slot 6 is unlocked, and there's slot 7, that's Tyranno Man X. When I started up this device, slot 7 was not unlocked. I had not gotten there yet, so Agumon would not have been able to uh, become Tyranno Man X. But because I defeated Tyranno Man X, Agumon now has that evolution path available to him. Now if we go further, we see 8, 9, 10, 13, so we jumped from 10 to 13. So that means that slots 11 and 12 are currently locked behind the quest mode. So as I clear out more areas in quest mode, I'll be able to unlock those additional evolutions as well. But for now, I cannot access them. I will need to unlock them first. So the guide has got a little thingy at the top. 
uh, little drop down menu. If you click on that, you can say what area you've most recently cleared. And as you do that, it will adapt the um, evolution chart to show only the Digimon that you are able to actually become. There are a couple of other unlocks. So one of them I already mentioned, the random encounter. There's one strong random encounter on both devices and defeating that random encounter will let you unlock that Digimon. You can't unlock it via quest mode. You can only unlock it via the random encounter. The other uh, special one to unlock is unlocked by connecting the version black with the version white, which I should let you know, I will be referring to these as versions XA and version XB for the white one because there's going to be multiple colors. <laughs> so it's not version white and version black anymore, it's just going to be version um, XA and then XB for white. So if I was to connect XA and XB together and do a battle, then that's going to unlock a special area, it's area SP, and by defeating area SP I will unlock yet one more evolution. So. It's pretty cool because this means that the first time that you play this device, you may get entirely different result from your second time. So very fascinating way of doing things. I really like it. It adds a lot of uh, good replayability in there. So look out for that when you are raising this that you may not always get what you expect if you have not unlocked all of the uh, areas as of yet. All right, so let's look at items real quick. All right, well, actually, did I go through all this? Let's see. Level four. Oh, well, that's just winning percentage, but that doesn't matter. I've done a lot of battles with you already. You're doing pretty good. Um, so items, so your food icon not only takes you to your meat and pills like always, but it takes you to various other items as well. So here's big meat, which will let me fill up my Digimon entirely, big pills, um, or is this protein plus? It's big meat, no it's filling meat, big protein, big protein lets you um, completely refill your strength. And both of those will have them also drop their hearts slower um, until they uh, drop their first heart. So that's very nice if you're not going to be able to take care of your Digimon for a minute. Let's get back in there please. All right, we have the power board, which this lets you increase your Digimon's power or likeliness to hit its opponent um, during quest modes. And these types, from here on out, these items can only be used once, one at a time, and they will run out as soon as you either clear a quest area or die in a quest area. You have the HP ROM, which increases your HP in quest mode. You have your AP chip, which increases your um, the damage each of your attacks does in quest mode. You have the um, seven switch, which makes it so that all your rolls in quest mode are sevens, making it easier to properly hit your meter, which I haven't showed that off yet. I still need to show that off. You have the, um, what is this called? The boss gate. I don't remember what it's called for real, but <laughs> it's uh, what it does. It takes you right to the last battle of an area. And some areas, this is going to be very useful because most early on, there's only three enemies per area, but later on you'll have up to seven. So boss gate gets more useful the farther along you go. And then that's it on this one. So you have all those various items you can use in quest mode to make it a little bit easier, make it more possible for your Digimon to win. So I mentioned with the seven switch, so let's go in here. Let's just do, we'll fight Yatagaramon here real quick. Well, we're gonna fight Harrismon. Um, once the battle starts, you'll see you'll get a Zyroll, right? So we're gonna hit the button. We rolled a five. This means that the little pin that's gonna go across the top here is gonna move not that fast. There we go. So we were able to get the top um, point of the meter, meaning that Agumon does that cool little cut in there, which that's also brand new for this, and does his super strong attack, which Harrismon just avoided like a jerk, but I'll probably still win anyway. Oh no, wow. Way to go, Agumon. I guess Harrismon is a data, so I guess that makes sense. Either way, not important. That's how the uh, Zyral works for the individual battles. All right, so training. You have two options. You have normal and you have excite. Normal will give you a meter with a speed of four, basically. So if you rolled a four uh, for the day, that would be the speed. Excite, however, uses the number you rolled for the day. So I rolled a, what was it, two? So I rolled a two, meaning that my meter is going to move pretty quickly if I choose excite. And it did. So I didn't even hit the top thing, but I still got pretty good. Um, so I will uh, also get points for that, which I didn't <laughs> let it resolve. Um, oh well, whatever. Oh, no, I'll still show it. Whatever. Uh, excite. Okay, so I hit it that time. And so it'll go through, it'll do its training, and whenever you get the highest meter, it gives you more likely of a cut-in, which is a super hit. And I got an excellent. So when you get an excellent in Excite, you fill up your hearts completely, your strength hearts. Um, if you get an excellent in normal, you can fill up to two. So for Agumon, it wouldn't matter which one I do, it'll fill up no matter what I do, but for higher stages, getting it on Excite will fill it up much faster. So that's the difference there. That's the only difference between normal and Excite is how quickly it fills strength meters. It does not affect effort or anything else like that. Although it does lower your weight a little bit too, which I guess I can mention that real quick as well. Your Digimon's weight 
Um, unlike the Digital Monster version 20th, if you fill this up to 99 gigabytes for your weight, your Digimon will get sick. And when I say sick, here's the funny thing. So let's just load them up, right? Let's load them up with a whole bunch of pills. Because on the Digital Monster version 20th, all you can get was injured. There were only injuries. And you get injuries when you either lose a battle or have too much poop. Um, both of those are things, but now it's been split into two different status ailments. This was something that also started on the Digimon Pendulum, and it's pretty consistent. So, he's got little speech bubbles there instead of a skull icon, and that means he is sick. You get sick from having too much poop on the screen, which in this case is eight. You can have up to eight piles before it gets sick instead of four, like on the Digital Monster version 20. It also poops a lot less, by the way. Um, like a lot, lot less, which is wonderful. <laughs> Let me tell you that one. And it beeps when it poops. I cannot tell you how helpful that is that it beeps when it poops because you're like oh okay i'll just have to go clean that up it's just a nice quick beep nothing in, um too intrusive you just go in there clean it up and you're good to go so anyway he's sick so if i go down to my bandage icon right normally that would just go right into healing it but now i choose okay is he sick or is he injured so i'm going to choose sick and he's fine if i was to choose injured it wouldn't do anything so you still get injured when you lose battles sometimes but sickness comes from being too fat or from having too much poop on the screen all right, so then let's talk about sleeping, right? So Digimon still sleep at night. Um, on this device, Digimon all fall asleep at the same time for the same stage. So all child level um, Digimon fall asleep at nine, in, uh, 9 in the evening, all adults fall asleep at 10, all perfects fall asleep at 11, and ultimates and super ultimates all fall asleep at uh, midnight. So that's the same across the board, and they all wake up at 7 o'clock. So there's not individual sleep times for different Digimon. And an important thing to note is that Digimon will still progress towards evolution while they are sleeping. So if your Digimon is sleeping at night, and let's say that you're a baby... Well, let's go with Agumon X here. Agumon X needs 24 hours to evolve to the next stage. So that 24 hours will continue counting down while it is asleep. So if it evolved, I think it evolved, what was it, last night around... 11 p.m. I believe um, if it evolved around 11 p.m. last night it's going to evolve around 11 p.m. tonight uh, so it's very e much easier to keep track of when your Digimon will evolve because of that you don't have to do any advanced calculations to figure out when it's asleep and when it's not growing it's just always growing now another thing about sleep is that you can't force your Digimon to sleep whenever you want anymore so if I go and turn this off he's not going to take a three hour nap Instead, he's going to be chucked into the freezer, and this is functionally a pause. Everything about the Digimon's pause, it will not get hungry, it will not lose strength, and it will not age towards evolution when it is in the freezer. So, it's a, fast, it's a fantastic thing to use when you are busy, you just want to take a break for a minute and just put your Digimon into pause mode. You don't lose anything from doing it other than time, and uh, yeah, very, very handy. The Digital Monster version 20th could nap for up to three hours, but it wouldn't actually pause. You'd actually, actually reset the device and then load it when you're ready to go again, which isn't as convenient as just being able to hit a little button to pause. So um, you also see that you can only access a few icons while it's in the freezer. You can access stats, the light bulb, or the uh, um, library. So we're just gonna go back to that, turn it back on, and there we go. Now, if it was tired, and this is very important, so I'm gonna change the clock to show you this because it works differently. So I'm gonna change it to 2100. 2103, let's be specific. All right, so my Digimon is now tired. We see the call light there, but unlike on the Digital Monster version 20th, where it would have little Zs popping up over it, the Zs aren't there, all right? It's just cycling between the same f um, few frames of animation here to let you know that your Digimon is tired. Now, first and foremost, I still have a poop there. I know that's annoying aesthetically for a lot of people. So when it is tired, you can still clean the poop without waking it up. There we go, it's still tired, it's still trying to go to bed. So what it needs you to do at this point is the same thing it needs you to do on the Digital Monster version 20th. We hit the light bulb, we hit off, and there's those Zs. There's when the Zs appear. So now your Digimon is sleeping. If you see the Zs, your Digimon is asleep. If you do not see Zs, it is not asleep. It is just tired and wants to go to sleep. You're not given Digimon beds in this one to sleep on, um, although there are a few Digimon that still have beds as part of their sleeping animation, but not all Digimon use that. Most of them will have their own little sleeping sprite like Agumon does here, where he just sits down and starts sleeping. So very important to keep that in mind. You have to make sure you can see the Z's, otherwise it has not been put to bed, and if you see the Z's, you're all good. You don't need to worry about not seeing the blanket. All right, so we're going to now, let's put the time back to something reasonable. There we go. And uh, important thing to know as well, your Zyra roll, when it, it gets re-rolled every day, right? I mentioned that. It will only re-roll if the clock at some point moves from 23.59 or 11.59 p.m. to midnight. Once that happens, it'll trigger a Zyra roll whenever your Digimon wakes up. Otherwise, if you were skipping forward in time, your Zyra roll would never change for the day. That includes both the normal daily Zyra roll we see here, 
as well as the quest modes I roll. All right, so this next thing right here, right? We have the whole library section here. So the first thing we see here is backup. So something I should mention is that on the digital monster version 20th, right? I've got, oh my gosh, he poops so much. Uh, we got little Betamon going on. I think he was calling earlier and we didn't feed him. But I need care mistakes on him anyway because he's going to become Airdramon, so whatever. So we have little Betamon right here. But if I hit the C button, you'll notice I've also got Piomon right over here. I'm raising two Digimon at once, which is a pretty nifty feature of both the Digital Monster version 20th and the Digimon Pendulum version 20th. Now, the Digital Monster X does not let you raise two Digimon at once. You can only have one at a time. And at first, that may seem like a downgrade, but here's the thing, um, is that they did at least include this option for backing up. So if I wanted to, I have two backup slots. I can just click on one of them, hit OK. There go the zeros and ones. And there is a brand new egg ready to hatch. And there we go. That's all there is to it. So Agumon is now frozen. He's not moving forward in his evolution timer. He is not getting hungry. He is not losing strength. He's just hanging out and doing nothing. Now, I can't actually put this egg in, back into the fridge. So we're going to cut for just one moment here. Okay, and now Putimon, who is a baby one and cannot go into backup, has now evolved into Tokomon X, and it can be backed up at this point. So we're going to put you in backup here. Back up. Let's get Agumon back out here. And there we go. They just changed places. So you can have up to two Digimon in backup at one time, meaning if you get to a Digimon that you really like, and you're like, well, I don't want it to die, and I don't want to... Uh, have to go through that struggle to make a new Digimon, just throw it back up and you're good to go. Now, once you do fill up your backup slots, you will need to start letting your Digimon die to get new ones in there. But either way, you at least have a, some room to use some backup Digimon as well. So that's what's there instead of raising two at once. And again, I know it's fun to raise two at once and that it may seem, in, in, in ways, yeah, it is a downgrade to not have that functionality in here. But there are things that do make up for it otherwise. So don't worry, I've still got more to go over. Um, and obviously, honestly, I feel like I've already said enough to make for it already anyway. I'm not making excuses for this device. It does not need two Digimon at once to be good. It is good for its many other merits. All right, so back into the library. We already went over this a little bit, right? Is that it just shows which Digimon you've raised and which Digimon you are able to raise. It shows all the library slots in there. And at first, you're not going to have very many, but you can have up to 30 on these versions. Later versions of the X had more Digimon raised. These guys only have 30, which again, also... That one's a legitimate downgrade. I do wish it had more Digimon, and for that reason, I definitely like the version 2 and 3X devices much better. Um, but there's still a lot going on in here. It's just, it's a shame that they only had 30 on each of these. Definitely seems like a downgrade coming from the Pendulum 20th, which had over 120 Digimon on it. So they're very much in the pattern of older Digimon devices where those weren't focused on the number of Digimon, but just introducing new Digimon to raise in small amounts. And to be fair, these were also anniversary devices that were building off of previous entire series, whereas this is kind of doing its own new thing. And then we also have in here something that I'll be interested to see if they fix. It says recode. This, this is just your battle record. It says recode on all versions of the Digital Monster X and the first wave of the Digimon Pendulum Z. The Pendulum Z 2 finally fixed it, which I was very surprised to see when that happened. So I'm wondering if they'll fix the spelling error on the uh, English version of this. We'll find out. It's not a big deal either way, but something that I've always just found funny. And then we have the connection menu, which you should be familiar with, in that we have an option for X or for Other. Other will let you battle against a version 20 device, so I'll show that off real quick here. Let's just zoom on out. All right, so we'll go to battle on the Digital Monster X, we'll choose Other. We'll go to battle on the Digital Monster version 20th and choose Battle and then Other. Betamon, connect them together, hit the button, and there they go. And so they are able to battle with each other. They don't count as unlocks for anything, so this does not count as one of the five connection unlocks for this, and this will not count as a version white unlock for this. Uh, they both just will independently get more, uh, well, Betamon, good job. They'll get more points in their battle record, if that's important to you, but otherwise there's uh, no connection unlocks from doing that. That'll only happen if you use the version 20th option over here or the Z option over here. Another thing you may notice is that there is no, um, copy mon function that that has that's not a thing on this device because again you're not raising multiple digimon you're not even raising multiple copy mon that was something that was for tag battling which there is no tag battling on this device so there's no purpose for copy mon so you won't see those on here you can't send digimon from the digital monster version 20th over here and you cannot send digimon from the digital monster x over here so keep that in mind there is no copy mon compatibility between the two all right so 
We've gone over a whole lot on that already. Next thing I want to talk about is the evolution, because that's the fun part, right? So this is what I really love about this device, is I've got Agumon right now, right? And again, you unlock evolutions in quest mode, which first of all is fantastic. I love that. It adds a lot of replayability to the first few things, uh, first few times on the device, because a lot of people just like playing to fill up the album, which first of all is even more fun on this than on the Digital Months version 20th, because it's just a, uh, you'll see why. Um, so unlocking evolutions is first of all a lot of fun, but here's the other great thing. On the Digital Monster version 20, there was one major problem with the way evolutions work, and that is you reach the adult stage, and then you had one choice from there, and that was it. You can only reach one perfect, and if your perfect could evolve, it could only reach one ultimate. On this device, you get more options as time goes on. So this Agumon here, you know, he'll be able to, I'm going for Tyrannomon right now, right? Tyrannomon will be able to evolve into multiple things, including Metal Tyrannomon, Metal Greymon X, uh, which is also Metal Tyrannomon X. I keep forgetting to add the X at the end of these. Um, it, it, can, it can evolve into several different options and based on how I raise it. If I get maximum level and zero care mistakes, I'll get one thing, or if I get maximum level and a bunch of care mistakes, I'll get another thing. Or if I get maximum level, um, a bunch of care mistakes, and I defeat a few um, ultimate or super ultimate, stage six Digimon, I should say, then I'll get another thing. There's a That's a whole other mechanic um, with the way this works, is that certain evolutions will require you to defeat stage six or higher Digimon in order to attain that evolution, which is a ton of fun. So no matter what stage you're at, you will have multiple choices. The only pot where that goes down a bit is going from ultimate to super ultimate, which isn't a Draugr's exclusive thing anymore. On the Digital Monster version 20th, only a very few Digimon can reach Super Ultimate. There are only five Super Ultimate Digimon in total, and you can only get to them by doing a special Draugr's. Well, on this device, Digimon naturally evolve into Super Ultimate from Ultimate after 48 hours of evolution time. And so most of them will require you to have higher level and very few care mistakes, but some of them will have multiple options. Later on in the X2 and X3, that became much more of a thing where most Digimon had multiple options for super ultimates, but here you can still at least go further via natural evolution, which is honestly great. I really do love that mechanic that you keep going. So definitely a lot of differences in evolution. That's really one of my favorite things about this device is that you've always got to be paying attention. There's always something different. It's not just hit adult, get your 15 battles, and then get zero care mistakes after you reach perfect. It's just, there's a lot more to it, which is a lot of fun. Um, evolution requirements are also a lot more simplified. So for reaching um, child and adult stages, you only have to worry about care mistakes and effort. There is no more overfeeding, that's gone, and effort's a lot easier to keep track of than the number of trainings, so that's also easier as well. And then from getting to adult to perfect um, or higher, you only have to worry about your number of care mistakes, the um, experience level that you're currently at, and the number of stage six Digimon you have defeated, which I know that one sounds weird and it's hard to keep track of, but trust me, it's not as complicated as it sounds. So. That's definitely been simplified overall, and evolution is just, it's a ton of fun on this. It's a really a lot of fun to see just where all over the map you go based on how you raise, and you could end up with very different lines every single time. Um, the spaghetti for this chart is all over the place. I highly recommend checking it out just to see how crazy it is. And again, that chart will start off small with only, I think, 14 Digimon, but it will get bigger and get up to 30 Digimon as you clear out quest mode. So I find that to be a ton of fun. I also am very happy about the change with number of battles, changing that to the experience level instead, because number of battles are always, it's all arbitrary, right? But number of battles specifically, it's like, okay, I did my 15 battles, I'm good for evolution, whatever. On here, I definitely like that you are a little bit more involved with it and having to get to specific experience levels, and it's also a lot more visible too. I'm always a big fan of evolution requirements being visible. So I just like the way it's represented more, and it just kind of makes more sense from a gameplay perspective to have that tied to level instead of just number of battles. So that's really cool. And the, really, the there's not much more to say about this. The last big thing I need to say is about death. And Agumon's not dying, and I'm not going to force him to die right now. But one thing you should know is that when your Digimon reaches um, 20 sicknesses or injuries or 20 care mistakes, or if it's been alive for 48 hours in its current form and has reached five care mistakes, it'll start dying. And you all have probably experienced that by now. Uh, the Digital Monster version 20th, it just starts making a whole bunch of noise, and you watch it die. Here's the fun thing though, is on the Digital Monster X is, um, and most other Digimon devices as well, there's a way to save your dying Digimon. And that is specifically for this, if it starts dying and you start hearing that song, just start mashing either the A or the B button. If you mash those buttons 100 times, you will save your Digimon from death and it will just continue to carry on. Now it will try to die again once it reaches another, um, uh, how should I say, once it adds a number to whatever was killing it. So if it was 
five care mistakes that killed it and you bring it back to life. Once you get a sixth care mistake, it'll try to die again, but you can save it again. You can save it as many times as you want and keep your Digimon alive forever, which is a pretty neat thing to do. So if you are worried about your Digimon dying, don't worry, you can save it this time. Now, if your Digimon does pass away and it has been more than 48 hours in its current form, then you will receive a traded egg. Now, you may have seen an egg pop out on the um, Digital Monster version 20th, but you can only see it for a brief moment here, and then it will be replaced with the gravestone. On here, the traded egg will stay on the screen, so you know for sure that you got one, and it's all nice and glittery when you start it up, which is uh, very nice. They have a nice look to them. And when you start up a traded egg, that changes your Digimon's minimum level to three instead of one throughout its entire lifespan. So you don't have to raise it as much to get it a little bit more powerful out the gate. Now, you will still need to raise its level to get certain evolutions, but you'll at least start off stronger, which is very nice. Another thing about eggs real quick is there is only one egg on this device. I mentioned it's a roster of 30 Digimon, so you're not going to be unlocking eggs as time goes on. You're only going to be unlocking evolution options. What do you want from me, Betamon? You want your snack? Here you go, have a snack. So, you're not going to be choosing from multiple eggs, This it's always the same egg, it's always Pootimon into Tokomon, and then Tokomon evolves into a few things, and so on and so forth. So, you're not choosing eggs like you are in the Digital Monster version 20th, um, and that's all there is to that. So, that's pretty much everything that you should know about this device. This video went a lot longer than I expected it to. They always do, don't they? I always have so much to say about these. Why, are there, why is there so many things to say about such simple little devices? So. If uh, you want more information on any of this, obviously I have the manual up on digitamahatchery.com. Head there, click on the manual section to read all about it. You can read every single little thing there is to know about these devices, including how much experience you need to level up, what attributes are better than other, how the power system works, all that stuff. It's all it's all in there. Um, so go read it through, and you'll be able to be better informed when this arrives. And also, the evolution guide is up there as well, so you can see exactly what your Digimon will become. I have also updated the versions and exclusives page, so where you'll be able to see the different colors for each version. So right now, I've only got this guy, the Japanese black, listed under version XA, but version XB, I currently have the Japanese white, the English white and blue, and then the English green and blue, which, holy cow, if you haven't seen the green and blue yet, take a look. <laughs> I probably have already put it on screen at this point, but man, that's a funky looking device, and I am honestly okay with that, because I've already got, I've got a lot of devices that look normal, right? Having more absurd looking devices is more pleasing to me at this point. So if you have any other questions about the Digital Monster X and what you need to know about it before it releases this summer, head over to uh, Digi uh, the Digitama Hatchery Discord server. As always, it is linked in the description. We have a whole help and question section for you to get your questions answered, or you can just talk about what you think about the Digital Monster X in the Modern V Pets channel and talk to your heart's content in there. We have a bunch of pins as well that'll tell you about the various uh, things you need to know going into it. And every time that we receive an important update about these devices release, we will be adding that to the news channel and pinging everybody so you can always stay informed every time there is a new piece of information as soon as it comes out. I always try to ping as quickly as I possibly can, and if I'm not around, one of the other moderators will definitely take care of that. So head over there, have some fun chatting about it, ask some questions, whatever you want to do, and definitely... I know, I know I said, like, usually I'll be like, oh, pick one of these up if you're interested. No, just, just get one. Just get one of these. They're, they're great. Forget about this. That's the old hotness. This is the new hotness. Go get one. They are just wonderful, wonderful devices. Really a lot of fun. And, you know, maybe I'm overhyping it, right? Maybe I shouldn't be overhyping. You might not like it. There are people that don't care for this device as much as I do, but I really do care for it. And I just think it's a more interesting experience than the Digital Monster 20th, especially if you've been playing with this for two years now. So a fresh experience is always good. Go out and get yourself one um, wherever you can. And uh, yeah, I will talk to all of you next time. Bye.